Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the Everything 28 liter Weekender backpack from Moment. And I was a big fan of the original MTW collection. The 21 liter day pack from that collection has been one that I've revisited many times over the past year. I'm continually impressed with just how functional the bag is. I really like the subdued aesthetic. And I also really like that Moment created something that could be used for camera gear, but that will also work really well as just an all purpose EDC backpack. And so as part of their new collection, they have you know, really addressed many of the issues that I had with the original bag, which weren't too many. It was already really quite solid. And they've also released this larger 28 liter version, which I was excited about as it seemed like it could also work well as a minimal travel bag. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what it's been like to use this over the past couple of weeks. I'll show you how I've loaded it out, walk through all the features, and I'll also talk about how it compares to some of the other similar bags that are currently on the market. Before jumping into the video, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the overall aesthetic, to me the appearance of the bag is very similar to the previous edition which I was a big fan of. It's got a very subdued and minimal style that reminds me a little bit of a Bellroy or an Evergoods type bag. So super versatile, it feels like something that's going to blend in very nicely into any environment that you take it, whether you're going into an office, traveling, or exploring a city. As far as the materials, the bag feels very solidly built. This exterior fabric is a 420D nylon that feels like it's gonna hold up well to rougher usage and also provide a nice amount of weather resistance. Beyond that, you also have some very nice YKK zippers all throughout. A couple of the compartments have aqua guards for the primary area and some of the more sensitive compartments. And then you also have a little flap that comes over the zippers to give you some additional protection. Continuing along the exterior, like the previous edition, I was happy to see that you do have an external water bottle pocket that offers a pretty decent amount of space. This is a 26 ounce Yeti Rambler, and I was able to fit it in there comfortably even when the main area is packed out. You can see the elasticity that the compartment has. This is pretty stretched out there. It looks like you have a little bit more space, but I wouldn't place anything much larger than this. It feels like it would start to get really tight, and I feel like the compartment has a nice height to prevent anything from sliding out too easily. And then when it's not in use because of that elasticity, this uh, hugs the bag pretty nicely to maintain a cleaner overall look. Beyond that, you also have a couple of handles, one on each side. that are gonna allow you to carry this like a briefcase if you don't wanna wear it on your back. Then you have one at the top. All of these have this durable feeling material that it's not super padded like some of the handles that you might find on something like Airs bags, but still just feels rugged. It gives you plenty of space to reach down and grab from any angle, and it doesn't feel like it's gonna tear or anything like that. On the front of the bag, you have the blacked out Moment logo. So I like that this is pretty subtle and it just kind of blends in with the exterior of the bag. And then one other thing to call out is that this does not stand up well on its own. It does have an angled bottom, which might help with the way that this kind of carries on your back. I've seen this on a couple of bags, but when you place the bag down next to you, it will tend to tip over. And then moving into the capacity, the Everything Backpack is offered in a couple of different sizes. The version that I have here is the 28 liter size, which might feel a little bit big as an everyday carry bag for some people. For me, I do like the versatility that this provides as far as allowing me to carry some extra stuff for longer days or working for minimal travel. And then I like that even when the bag is a little bit more packed out, it manages to maintain a pretty slim profile overall, which made it great for navigating crowded areas, jumping onto public transit and carrying onto a variety of domestic and international airlines. Taking a look at the harness system, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. This has been improved quite a bit from the previous edition of the bag. The padding on the straps feels thicker, more comfortable and robust. On the inside you have a nice breathable mesh to help prevent moisture from building up. And then the straps also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out. I also really like the contoured shape that they have and you have an adjustable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. As far as the back panel, this has also been really comfortable and like the straps has improved padding that's well distributed all throughout. It has the same mesh to provide additional breathability and I like that there is some elevation here to create this air channel to give you some additional ventilation while you're walking around throughout the day. On the back panel, you also have a nice luggage pass-through that's gonna allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. And I really like the orientation here, which allows you to actually stand the bag up when you're using the luggage pass-through to easily be able to access the laptop compartment. 
And on the back, you also have a hidden zippered compartment. That is gonna be a good spot for something a little bit more sensitive, like a passport, some extra cash, or a wallet to keep it a little bit more protected from pickpockets. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag has a fairly minimal but effective layout, in my opinion. Starting off on the front, you have a zippered quick access pocket that's pretty tall. I like the orientation on this pocket, which allows you to swing the bag around and grab stuff from this area without having to take it all the way off. You have a nice light lining on the inside to give you some contrast so you can see what you're reaching for. And then the compartment also has pretty good amount of volume. So if you wanna place something a little bit bigger, like a pouch, which is what I currently have here, I have my Alpaca Admin pouch. That, that'll fit in there comfortably. This might be a good spot for sunglasses. I also have my USB hub to charge my laptop and other devices while I'm on the go. And then on the inside, you also have a zippered compartment that has this nice kind of elastic mesh to provide some separation and storage for smaller items that you don't want floating around. I wish that there had maybe been some slip pockets in here. It really is just another large area. So it does work well for something like a notebook or an e-reader if you're wanting to grab that a little bit more easily. And on the inside, you also have a little lanyard with a clip that's gonna be a good spot to attach something like your keys or a multi-tool. On the back, you have a dedicated laptop and tech area. This has the AquaGuarded zipper to give you a little bit more protection from the elements. And I like that this is a top loading compartment so it pairs well with the luggage passenger as I mentioned earlier. In here you have space for a tablet, a laptop, and then some tech accessories. Starting off with the tablet sleeve. This is a pretty simple slip pocket. It's not super padded, but it is pulled up off the bottom of the ground. So it is gonna provide some protection for your tablet. Currently what I have there is an iPad mini with a case, you can see that you could probably fit a full-size tablet comfortably. And then behind that, you have a dedicated laptop sleeve that should be able to hold up to a 15-inch laptop, maybe even a 16-inch. That might get a little bit tight, but you can see there's some leftover space here with my 13-inch MacBook Air. This sleeve is a little more padded than the slip pocket. And I like that it is also pulled up off the bottom of the ground. So if you happen to place your bag down a little bit harder, your laptop should be well protected and there's just you know good padding all around. And so pulling my device out, now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. No fleece lining here. And I do wish that this sleeve was a little bit more rigid, but it does come up a decent amount. So if you happen to have a thicker device or you wanna use a case with your laptop, it should be able to handle that pretty comfortably. And then on the front of this area, you have some simple slip pockets that have this nice elastic mesh that are gonna be great for handling you know, your mouse, your chargers. At the moment, I have a GoPro in here, so even something a little bit bulkier is able to fit in there comfortably. Then you have a few small slots for something like a pen, stylus. At the moment, I have a flashlight in there, but really great to just be able to keep all of your tech stuff close to your devices. Moving into the main compartment, an interesting thing about this bag is that you can actually access it in two ways. So you have this front zipper, which is not quite clamshell. It opens like three quarters, which is meant to pair with the camera cube that we'll take a look at in a little bit. So, you know, you can swing your bag around, access part of the camera cube to be able to reach your gear. Uh, so it's an interesting layout. This is how the original version of the bag worked. And I think it works well. It gives you more than enough space, even though it doesn't open up fully. If there was no other opening, this would still be very easy to just grab whatever you need from the bag. And at 28 liters of space, you could see that even with the items that I have in here, there's still some leftover capacity if I wanted to toss in some extra gear. But what's cool about this bag is that you also have the ability to lay it flat, which seems to be more popular nowadays with camera bags, and then open it up completely clamshell style. Again, this also pairs well with the camera cube that we'll take a look at in a little bit but you can get a full view of everything that I've loaded out in this compartment. At the moment I have my Beat Studio headphones, I have a packable rain jacket, my drone in its hard shell case, and then I also have the Moment Tech Pouch. I featured this in the previous video that I did for the MTW collection. This is an updated version, still pretty similar. I'll do a little bit of a walkthrough on this in a second as well. Then I have the Evergood Civic Access Pouch, one liter and two liters. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. Pretty simple layout overall. You have a couple of attachment points that are meant to pair with the camera cube. 
And then beyond that, just an open space that could also work for minimal travel. If I wanted to toss in a packing cube, a dot kit, an extra pair of shoes, I could definitely use this as the name implies for a weekend trip. And then on the front of the compartment, you have one zippered pocket that works well if you're opening it from the other side. And same nice mesh that we've seen throughout the rest of the bag. And here I just have a deck of playing cards and a nail clipper set. And then on the other side, you have two mesh zippered compartments here that you know have that same nice material so they're going to give you a little bit of volume and stretch if you want to place something a little bit bulkier i don't typically use these especially with all the pouches that i'm carrying but these could be a great spot to store additional cables accessories maybe some toiletries if you're traveling so nice to have them and then they stay out of the way if they're not in use so in general really like the layout of this main area and the updates that have been made to the everything backpack from the original version the the additional size the updated harness there's a lot to like here and if you're interested in a you know versatile bag that's going to have a subdued aesthetic and a lot of functionality this is going to be an excellent option to take a look at Coming back to the camera cube accessory with a larger bag, they've also created a larger cube, which is gonna be able to handle more gear if that's what you typically have with you. And so really great layout and build quality here on the exterior, you have a carrying handle, and then you have some really protective feeling material all around. It's rigid, so you have the confidence that it's gonna keep everything protected. Here I have the version that I had in the 1.0 MTW collection. I had the smaller edition. This is actually probably more the size that I would prefer for my setup. I have a very minimal setup. I don't use a ton of lenses or bodies, uh, but you can see sort of the size difference there if this one was too small for you originally. Uh, beyond that, you know, you have two access points, which is really nice. You can actually access it from the top to have full view into the camera cube. If you're pairing it with the backpack, I'll show it in a second. Uh, when you open it clamshell style, you have easy access to everything here. It comes set up for, you know, body and a lens here, a couple of different slots, put um, drone accessories, GoPro accessories as well. Like many other camera cubes, it's got these adjustable dividers, but these feel protective. Uh, so really nice. Uh, the high contrast lining is also a cool touch. And then you have the ability to access it from the side as well. And so this will pair nicely with the various ways that you can access the bag. So you can easily reach in, grab it. You have some attachment points along the exterior, which was the same system as the 1.0 version to allow you to secure it properly to the backpack. So I'll go ahead and do that now just to kind of showcase how this is all meant to work. I'll uh, actually use the clamshell opening of the bag and lay it down flat so that it's a little bit easier. And then let's see, uh, when I lay this down flat, I can connect it to these little hooks here. So these are fairly elastic to make it easy to actually get these on and off without feeling like it's all gonna come loose. So that'll keep the camera cube in place on both sides. So now with all four corners secured, you can see that's not coming out. And again, placing this down on the front, then you can use the full opening here at the top. I know a lot of people just like to place their bag down so they can reach in and grab whatever they need a little bit more quickly. But then, because of the dual access of the camera cube, flip it around, and then because of the wide opening on the front, if you leave the zipper pulls in the easier orientation here, you can actually open up the side pocket and then still be able to access it when you're slinging the bag around without taking it all the way off. So it takes a little bit of getting used to with the clips here and the size of the cube and just making sure that all the zippers are oriented in the way that's gonna be easiest for you to reach in and grab your camera. But as you can see there, like many of the standard camera bags that have the side opening, you can kind of recreate a similar system here that works well. And as somebody who doesn't always want to have my camera gear with me, I really love the fact that you can just kind of take this out, even use it with other bags. If you have if, you know, a travel and you wanna use something a little bit larger or you just wanna use the case itself. So lots of versatility here, great implementation. And then finally, taking a closer look at the tech pouch, the aesthetic and the layout haven't changed too much from the previous edition, which is great because I really liked using that one a lot. So it comes in this black colorway. 
It's got kind of a ripstop fabric, which feels and looks great. You have the blacked out moment logo on the exterior, no handles on the outside. I typically don't use those too, too much with pouches, but just something to note. And then I like that it has this material that's not completely rigid, but also not totally unpadded. So it strikes a good balance where it feels like it's gonna give you some protection, but it'll still be a little flexible for a tighter bag. So I, that's typically what I prefer. And then as far as sizing, this is you know on the larger side for pouches, but not overwhelmingly so. I have a couple of pouches here to compare with. Uh, so I have the Bellroy Tech Kit. This one is actually more on the rigid side. It's a little bit smaller, but pretty close in size. You can see here the thickness. And so, you know, pretty comparable. And then the Evergood Civic Access Pouch, two liters. It's gonna be a little bit bigger. So just showing that off there from all the different angles. But I think this really strikes a nice middle ground among many of the pouches that I've used, which is why I've enjoyed it a lot. And then it has the wide opening that has an interesting layout. It doesn't have the accordion style that's become quite popular with many tech pouches. I actually prefer more open layouts like this than have some additional flexibility in my opinion. It still stands up quite well on its own. It's got the gussets to prevent it from opening fully flat. And then you have this floating divider here that kind of separates the bag into two sections. You do have some space just in between the sections to place items that don't necessarily fit into one of the organizer options that are present in the bag. So floating here, I just have my Peak Design mobile tripod, but then on the back, you have a couple of nice slip pockets, really great feeling elastic material here where you can store something like a laptop charger and its cable. I also have a portable battery for my phone. And then on this floating divider, you have some elastic bands that are gonna be great spots for cables, dongles. Here I have a wired pair of headphones, which I typically have with me for flights. You have spots where you can place a pen or a stylus. On the other side, I had a couple of additional accessories, my hard drive with the cable for it, the USB-C cable. And then on the back, you have a zippered mesh compartment that has some good internal volume here wasn't even sure what to place in here just with all the organization provided. But if you have something, a bulkier charger, uh, which I have here from Anchor, this is a smaller one, but you know, more space if you have something a little bit bigger. And then I have a multi-port cable that I like to have with me. And on the back, you have some smaller slip pockets, which may be good for camera batteries or other small accessories. In my case, I have little just USB that I like to carry with me. And then a good spot for an air tag. So again, just same layout mostly as the previous edition. I feel like it strikes a good balance of providing options without going overboard. It's really easy to kind of take advantage of all the space, which I really like. And so if you don't have a tech pouch that you're attached to, or you're just looking for something, that's gonna be really versatile. I think this is gonna be an excellent option to consider. And so to wrap up, it's been a pretty great experience testing out the Moment 28 liter everything backpack over the past couple of weeks. You can currently purchase this on the company's site for around $200, which is definitely a bit of an investment, but to me feels like a pretty reasonable price considering the features and build quality that it has to offer. And it's also gonna compare pretty well to some of the other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the Evergood CPL24, which is one of my favorite all-purpose bags of all time. It has a similar subdued aesthetic and a really nice organizational layout. It's one of my favorite pocket layouts of any bag. Every pocket's just super functional. It has its own independent volume. It's got a clamshell style opening, a dedicated and well-padded laptop compartment really comfortable harness system. So it checks off a lot of similar boxes to this one. It doesn't have things like the luggage pass through or the water bottle pocket, but if you're looking for a bag that, you know, is just gonna be very solid, versatile, and work well in a ton of different settings, and that's gonna be one of the best options to take a look at. Another bag this made me think of is the Brevity Jumper, which is one of my favorite camera bags. It has a more subdued, simple look. It just reminds me of kind of a Jansport backpack, but it has a compartment with adjustable dividers that can work for your camera gear. It has a side access zipper so that you can grab your camera quickly. And then beyond that, it still offers some space in organization for your day-to-day -day essentials. And it's got a dedicated laptop compartment, a luggage pass-through, water bottle pocket, so it checks off a lot of the same boxes. I don't think that the durability on that one and the harness are gonna be quite as solid as this one, but if you're looking for just a simple, versatile camera bag, that's gonna be an excellent option to consider. 
And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Wandered Provoke, which is another camera bag that I come back to a lot, particularly if I'm carrying some extra stuff or I want some extra protection from the elements that as a roll top bag really feels like it's gonna give you a little bit more peace of mind. Can also adjust its volume to hold some extra stuff. The camera cube that Wandered has with their bags is adjustable protective you have a side access pocket to be able to grab your camera easily it's got a luggage pass through really comfortable harness system it opens up flat so that you can access everything in addition to having the roll top at the top the aesthetic for that is you know pretty functional it looks more rugged and outdoorsy it's not going to be as subdued as this but if you're looking for something very protective and versatile for your camera gear then that's going to be a great option to take a look at as well with that being said, the Moment Everything backpack holds up really well against all those options. It really improves on the original collections and is one of the best bags that I've checked out this year. And if you're looking for something that's gonna offer a subdued, versatile aesthetic with a nice layout and a comfortable carry that's also gonna be able to handle your camera gear, then this is gonna be one of the best options that you can check out. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you all think of the updated Everything Backpack and how it compares to some of the other popular tech and camera bags that are currently on the market. And if there's any similar options that you think that I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank the company for sending the bag and accessories for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.